Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Nick Martin, and today we're going to talk about stretching the attack line from the engine company to the front door. In this scenario, we can generally have three different kinds of situations. We can either have too much hose, too little hose, or just the right amount of hose. Unfortunately, it never seems that we have just the right amount. It's always we have too much or too little, and we have to manage that. So today we're going to work with a very common situation. We're going to be stretching a 200-foot cross lay to the front door of a detached single-family house, and we're going to have some things we need to do to manage the excess hose that we're going to have initially at the front door. So let's take a look at things we can do to deal with that. So as our home hose team comes off here, I want to just point out a couple things as our nozzle firefighter begins to take a load. If you take a look at the grip he's got on the line here, he's got a firm grip with one hand just behind the coupling and another, another hand on top, he's going to get a real tight sandwich on that line. The idea with a lot of these pre-connected lo hose loads that we use is to move a bulk of hose efficiently in one movement. So if we don't get a good grip like this, we can end up losing hose here, which means more hose we have to manually drag around the obstacle. So he's gonna go ahead and bring that out onto his shoulder. Notice that he's gonna put it on his shoulder so that it's gonna drape fairly evenly front to back. It makes it nice and manageable. He's got a great firm grip on the top here to keep it sandwiched on his shoulder. And as that last loop comes behind, he's gonna reach behind with his hand and kind of hold a loop here. And as he moves, go ahead and take a couple steps for me. What that's gonna do is say I stepped on his hose here. If he didn't have, we'll go ahead and turn this way here for me. If he didn't have his hand here, then if I step on this or get caught on an obstacle or something, that tends to pull hose off of our shoulder, which negates the purpose of having a hose lad like this. When he gets this and he feels that tug, now he can look around and, and see what that is. And it's uh, either an obstacle, in which case he'll manage the obstacle, or it's that the hose behind him is tight and it's time to let that hose come off of his shoulder. So in this case, he tells me, get off my hose, and he starts going towards our obstacle as our backup firefighter comes in. So as our backup firefighter comes in, what, what he could do here, what a lot of people would do, is just throw this hose to the ground. It's inefficient. They're going to have to manually manage all 100 feet of that around a series of obstacles. So since we have a good crew here of four people, what he can do is go ahead and grab the loops starting just above the ear, and he can actually take them in his hand and take them with him as the crew starts to go. As our crew starts to go towards the obstacle, our driver is going to come in and make sure that the bed is clear and then we'll start managing our obstacles as we go around the back of the truck. Okay, so our guys have come off the rig, now we're coming to the door. In this scenario, we're going to need water at the door. So our nozzle firefighter is going to get over here, and I want to show you a couple things. What he's going to look to do, he's got 100 feet of hose on his shoulder. we got to control this right, or we're going to have a mess at the front door that's going to cause big problems when we go into the house. So as he places the line down here on the porch, what he's going to look to do, he's going to look to control this outside loop of hose and the nozzle simultaneously, and we'll see why in just a second. So he's going to go ahead and, and place it down kind of nicely, right? He's going to control that outside loop and his nozzle by putting his knee on it, okay? And now our nozzle firefighter can begin to mask up. So while our nozzle firefighter begins to mask up, our officer is going to come over, and he's going to grab this coupling here in the middle of the 100 foot. Now, since he's got the outside loop and the nozzle controlled, when the officer takes that coupling back, we'll see, go ahead, that that's going to go ahead and give us a real nice about 50 foot flaked out S right in line with our obstacle, okay? So what we're looking to do here, and this is very important, is all of our extra hose, we're looking to make sure that it's flaked out in line with the obstacle. So you'll see that here we're generally going straight back. Some guys mess that up and they end up going across the obstacle. If we go across the obstacle, what that does is create friction points here at the side of the door or the entranceway every time that we move that hose. And that can really slow us down. So we've got our first 100 foot down. Now our backup firefighter over here. See, he's got this extra hose he brought with him. He can start to manage that. He's going to flake that out also in line with the door. And we got our driver over here. Our driver is taking a proactive role, clearing all of our hose around this first turn obstacle, bringing that hose over here into the S. Our driver is being very proactive. We want to make sure that all of this line is flaked out properly. There's no point in him standing at the pump panel waiting to pull the lever while the line's not flaked out. He might as well get involved and help flake the line out so that we can get the line charged quickly. 
A good role for the driver to take is to control from the rig to the entrance to the fire area. He can't charge the line until that stuff is flaked out anyway. So now that we're in position, you notice that our uh, nozzle firefighter went ahead and masked up first because he's going to be the first guy to enter the fire area. Our backup firefighters, if you notice, they were worried about managing the hose and not putting their masks on. That's what we want. You know, we want the nozzle firefighter masked up, ready to enter right away. After the line is flaked out, that means we can charge it, he can begin fighting fire, and we can get our backup firefighters masked up and ready to help make the stretch as we go in. All right, so now we're going to take a look at this in full speed. We're on the scene, our crew is going to come out, our nozzle firefighter and most of the other crew is going to go right over to our line. He's going to bring it out, controlling it on his shoulder like we talked about. Our backup guy is right in position so that as our nozzle comes off the bed, he's ready to take the backup load. Our line is off and we start moving towards our obstacle. Our officer and the driver help clear the bed. We manage our first obstacle, which is the back of the apparatus here. As we get up to the door, our nozzle firefighter is going to control the hose load like we talked about, laying it down. He's going to take the nozzle and the outside loop and control that. Our officer is going to grab the coupling, pull it back, giving us a nice 50-foot S right in front of the door. While, that, the back, while that's going on, the backup firefighter has managed his line. So now we're getting masked up, right? Our nozzle firefighter is going to be the first guy to worry about getting masked up while the rest of the crew is managing the line. Now that we've got the line flaked out and ready while the guys are getting masked up, the driver knows from coordination we're ready to put water in the line. The line's getting charged. The guys have the pipe controlled under the knee, so as the water comes in, he doesn't lose it. As the line gets charged, the crew is going to space out to manage any additional kinks that might come up as the line goes from uncharged to charged. We get water in the pipe. We're ready to bleed it. And now we're ready to make entry. Okay, so that went great. What we see is a very common scenario that we have to deal with. We have the rig pretty close to the building, say maybe 25 feet or so, but we had a 200 foot cross lay that we had to manage within that tight 25 foot space. If we don't do that right, we get piles of hose, we get bag kinks, and we get a lot of extra work. But with a little pre-planning and coordination, we have all that hose flaked out in an actionable area and in a manner that it's flaked right in line with our obstacles. So as they go through the door and go to our fire area, we're not going to encounter extra kinks. We're not going to encounter action friction points. So it was a great job by the crew. Thank you for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Nick Martin.